Hi everyone, welcome to the NYC Accessibility Meetup. We're here at NYU's uh, Ability Lab, and I wanted to start off by thanking uh, the, the group here for hosting us tonight. Also, a thank you to Mirabai Knight, our very gracious stenographer who's come through for us time and time again, so thank you Mirabai. Check out Mirabai's project, Plover, at Plover, what's the URL? OpenStenoProject.org. OpenStenoProject.org. Um, and also SSB BART Group has been an ongoing sponsor that we want to thank. Uh, and then, um, so I mean, I guess I'll just get on to the, the, uh, the good stuff here. So t tonight we have John Kirkwood and Terry Nelson. They're from City Mouse here in New York. And they offer services around um, making content accessible uh, to align with ADA standards and general accessibility guidelines. Um, I don't want to give away too much, so uh, without further ado, uh, John and Terry, please take it away. Hi, everybody. Good to see you. Second time. Some of the faces look familiar. I'm Terry. That's John. John Kirkwood. Okay. Uh, just to give you a little background, um, what Responsive Plus is and how it came about. Uh, basically, it came out with John being the guru of technology and design and us knowing each other and knowing what his experience is of becoming you know, involved in this. And me being a guy who's kind of worked in the advocacy market for a while. Um, I'm an agency guy by trade, worked 20 years in advertising, marketing agencies, uh, all types of clients. Uh, but that kind of led me to serve on a few different boards. Uh, and what excited me about this is the fact that it is a market that I see kind of as, if it's not in your sight, it's out of your mind. And to me, that's not acceptable. So it kind of brought us together and came up with the idea of responsiveplus.org. So, Essentially, it comes down to design, which John's going to speak to, uh, marketing, which I'll speak to a bit, innovation, again, will be John, and then the, the big part of this is why we're here is advocacy. Uh, and the last thing I'll leave you with is, you know, we, we were, uh, I was pretty uh, happy with the last two years I worked with a group called Hip Hop Public Health uh, with the uh, head neurologist at Columbia University. And we took that from an idea to going to the White House twice and getting Michelle Obama behind us. So, you know, we feel this is another topic that we can take to that next level. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce John, and then we'll get back into it. Uh. Yeah. Oh, did you do, flip the slide? Yeah. Okay. Um. Sorry, give me a second here. Which slide am I on? This is losing yourself. Okay. Um, as Terry is helping me a little bit over here, one of the reasons is because uh, I uh, have lost. Uh, most of my vision due to a brain aneurysm, uh, which has uh, left me legally disabled uh, and uh, has given me a new sort of lease on life in a way that I understand how uh, the world of people with disabilities, including hidden disabilities and cognitive disabilities, deal with, deal with life and deal with interacting online. Um, there's a difficult thing around cognitive disabilities in that um, it's a, a hidden disability that might not be taken very seriously until maybe you're a lot older. Uh, the, the market of people with uh, cognitive disabilities is the largest part of the disability community, actually. Uh, so uh, as we're all getting older and uh, when people keep the online world as an integral part of their life, they're going to be using the websites that you develop in order to move forward in their life. So getting to know what those issues are for people with cognitive disabilities uh, is something that 
It's very important for a designer or people in the, the web accessibility world. Uh, let me skip that. No, is it not? No. I can do it that way. Okay. Sorry, out there. You want to go with it? Yeah, because yeah, this. Why don't you take the, your one? Sure, yeah, yeah. no problem. Um, so you've seen a couple of slides. See if I can slip back here. Yeah. Slides, right? yeah. All right. So, all right. So, uh, as we come up with, the, you know, developing this advocacy group, you know, I, I, as a marketing guy, I love logos. You know, what can I say? You know, it's one of those things we like doing that and testing them. And uh, and so, you know, John and I and, a, and a, a group of people, we've been thinking about like how we can demonstrate, you know, what we want to move forward with and what would it represent. So this symbol here, uh, this responsive logo, is a symbol of the commitment and understanding for refinement of, of this world. Um, the uh, the interaction basically reflects all abilities. So we're going to kind of go through from the accessibility side to just everybody. And that's kind of how we want to design it and move forward as, as we move into this group and learn more about what you guys are doing. So really what, how this logo on the right came about is we kind of took what is the, that universal uh, disability symbol and combined it with what is Responsive Plus. And Responsive Plus, really what it means is Responsiveness in design and being responsible with our designing, our marketing, and our innovation. So that's really what Responsive Plus is as a group. So this, we're speaking to the uh, converted here, so it's not really something you don't really understand. But for us, making this and letting the world know that there is a world out here that not everyone is addressing, though they should be, is really what we feel we can help out with. Just to touch base on some of the people or groups that, you know, have the condition uh, or the challenge, you know, baby boomers or parents, you know, who are like, you know, getting older, you know, aging eyes, you know, can't see stuff. I'm kind of starting to have that a little bit myself. Uh, veterans, of course, uh, young adults with ADD, uh, traumatic brain injury sufferers like John was just describing, uh, reduced sight. I love finger dexterity. Uh, I saw something about you know fat fingers. I thought that was hilarious that people did the whole idea of fat fingers, but maybe that's just me. Um, but the idea is basically to be first movers in this area. And uh, the aspect of cognitive uh, disabilities, when you know I went further into it because this is the reason we're here. It, it looked like this is such a uh, um, a big opportunity because really there's no real rules in this area of it. We know we're talking about the blind and the, and the functionally disabled in that area, but when it comes to cognitive disabilities, it's not clearly defined. But there's far more people in this category. So it's kind of like we're really excited about the fact that, hey, someone's got to take this on and we're here to help. So let's get back into you know, why we developed you know, the idea of Responsive Plus. Um, and being responsible. So essentially it's responding to the needs of all devices and all people. So there are various groups that obviously need to have these accessibility issues conquered and addressed for them. And for us, it's, it's so important for us. You know, John is a guy I've known for quite a long time. You know, we've been friends for a long time and we've done some business and now this is a, a big thing for us. Uh, but increasingly, as this group is being addressed, what I know as a marketing guy is that this is an opportunity. It's a business opportunity, folks, for two, because if you're addressing a market that's not being addressed, this means you're going to have loyal people, you know, people who want to work with you, people who want to buy your products. So it's almost, to me, is a no-brainer. You know, as a consumer, as, you know, as someone who's challenged in this area, if we're addressing this area, then they're going to be there for it, you know, because that's what, you know, they need. 
And this one, you know, I, I, I love this, uh, this, this uh, image here because this really kind of represents everybody. <laughs> you know, I mean, how many of us is walking down the street and everybody's got a device in their hand and they're, they're trying to figure out where they're going, they're looking this way, they're looking that way. I like to define that as that distracted user. Um, as I was coming here, I'm looking at my phone and I ran into the door of the Metro Tech Center, you know, and I was like, okay, well, pay attention. Uh, well, since we have so many things going on, maybe we need a little more focus or, or making things more simple. And that's kind of how, you know, we're, we're perceiving this. Um, I love this uh, slide here uh, because it just hits home. I mean, we're talking about a considerable amount of the population that have some type of condition, you know. And, you know, we'll talk more about the advocacy side and the legal issues, but ultimately it's a business opportunity as well. I mean... You know, it doesn't necessarily mean that you're just doing this because you have to. There's, there, there's money here. You know, if you get a loyal customer of any kind and they want to come back to you, then I don't care what brand it is, they're going to be there for you. And now I'm going to turn over to John again because basically he'll set up the, the design side and you know, go through those details. Yeah, and as Terry was saying, this, uh, you know, the, the whole aspect of Responsive Plus, like, came came together around responsive design, really. And, but responsive design is, is technology words that is about respond, uh, having generally web presences that respond to any device, uh, whether it's your, your, your iPad or your personal device or your, your home computer. Uh, but it wasn't about responding to devices that were specifically designed for accessibility and why that was that sort of kept out of the dialogue a lot of times so uh, we wanted to really extend it to this this area of, of calling it uh, responsive plus and we want you to to come to the table around that too you can uh, sign up and we'll uh, uh, discuss this further on what is the best way to do it because we we know that designing for everything is is difficult and designing for all the new technology as it's moving constantly is difficult as well keeping to standards is the right way to go uh, and how where are those standards going to and let's let's bring it to another level and have the best design that we can possibly do No, I get it. Yeah, I have to do it on screen now. Yeah, um, So, here's, you know, your typical example of uh, responsive design for all your devices. Um, but this is what we want you to come with us on, is to integrate not only your ability to work on a mobile device, so sometimes a hamburger as people call it or use, um, but integrate responsiveness in that in a way that responds to the needs for people with disabilities. How do we do that the best way possible? How do we integrate the, the uh, disabled world, the blind world uh, into your designs? Let's all do this the same way. Let's, let's figure out something that works and that we can do together. So, talking to cognitive design. Now, this is an area that's really difficult for people to get their head around. Um, it's easier to say, all right, we're making something accessible for a blind uh, person by, by giving uh, alternative text for images and, and dealing with uh, how things should be done properly for that group. But what is it around the almost mushier aspect of design that uh, makes it not accessible for people with cognitive disabilities? Two major areas are content focus and the focusing on interaction of the users. So when, when someone is looking at a site, um, how is that content designed? 
where are the focal points of the page? Are they, are they easily accessible? And you could think of it in the way that, as Terry pointed out, the distracted user walking across the street needs to get that information. Not that they should be on their device while walking across the street, but you know everyone does it. Um, how do you get that information to the person in a way that is simple, straightforward? Uh, that's a major area of, of cognitive design that is a focal point. Also, what is that interactive experience? Can someone return to the page that they were on? Can they track where they were on the site to get back to it once they've gotten through the situation that distracted them? Or uh, if they have cognitive issues or are easily distracted, they can get back to that point. So a lot of it is about designing properly, as some designers would think, but if the focus isn't there, it's not going to allow the user to get to the information that they want. So what can you do? Um, limiting font faces, putting softer colors on things to emphasize important text, have, have different uh, content and different modes of imagery, illustrations, and these are, are often real design principles too. Um, so give, give things language that's easy to understand, that you know that you can get to the information in a way that, that is accessible for someone that needs it in a way that they might not be able to put 100% of their energy into focusing on it. So one of the big parts, and you've probably all done this, where you've helped out someone that might be older, uh, that is maybe booking online travel, doing a multi-step form process that is just completely overwhelming. And they might even have a screen reader that by the time it gets through the whole page, um, that would have been funny on camera. If by the time, uh, by the time it gets through the whole page, it's timed out. So, uh, and I'm sure since you're in the accessibility community, you under, understand that. Uh, and, but uh, that is something that the interaction might even be slower than, say, a screen reader, or they might need a break and need to be able to get back to something. So, what are you doing in your designs to accommodate people? that have accessibility issues that might not be the type of accessibility issues that you normally design for. All right, um, I know I heard some people talking about Google Glass and Harem before um, and uh, what the potential of that uh, as a device is uh, and um, We've been working with an organization called Bancroft out of, out of Philadelphia that, that uh, its main uh, mission, its mission is to help people with cognitive disabilities. Uh, so technology as it turns, arc and, turns the arc into things that are incredibly cutting edge can innovate around helping people with cognitive disabilities in ways that we're probably not going to see for five to ten years, really. But it's the, the additional brain that you have in your pocket or, um, or with you at all times that you can use in order to function in life again. I had a personal experience with that uh, that was a brain aneurysm and uh, August of 2006, a while ago now, uh, and I had to learn to spatially navigate with half the vision that I had before. I have no left field of vision, and therefore I have no space on the left side. I can't map anything that I don't see, 
and I can't even understand that something would be there when I can't even map it internally. So it's a very difficult thing to describe, but, uh, but I needed technology just to make it from my apartment to therapy every day, uh, and that was using, using uh, Google Maps, essentially, and a handheld device, and uh, that was my bridge to knowing that the only way with my cognitive disability is that I would be able to interface with the world again uh, in a way that's functional was to embrace technology and use it to bridge the gap around uh, the issues that, that my brain can no longer handle. So uh, if you want any more information about that, feel free to, to contact me around that. All right, next slide. Oh, on screen. Yeah, it's like This is what I discussed. Um, okay, I'll take it. Thank you. All right. All right. So, kind of give you. Oh, questions. Sure. Yeah. Thanks. Is that better? Yes. All right. Okay. So, just to kind of follow up where uh, you know uh, where we started and where we are now. Um, we really started kind of with the advocacy approach, um, and I, I use the term out of sight, out of mind, because most of the people I know in the marketing world, when I mention this to them, if they have not anyone that they know personally, or that they've had a direct, you know, relationship in some kind, they don't know about it. It's really kind of amazing, because I didn't know either, really, until, you know, I actually learned more about it through John. So, in that respect, we think there's a lot of awareness that needs to get out there. Um, the side of design, we kind of went through that, and, I, and one of the, I think the key, one of the key points of cognitive disabilities is such a broad area. Um, the rules aren't clearly defined. I think this is one of the opportunities I think with this group is that you know we can help define those rules. Uh, as a marketing guy, I, I see this as you know a really great uh, opportunity. Um, uh, one uh, as as a big picture of helping people. Uh, two, for, for clients and brands out there who may not be aware or shy away from it for any number of reasons, uh, that it's something that they can actually win on. So as, uh, as a marketing uh, um, area, I think there's a big, big opportunity there. Uh, the innovation John has spoke about, that was just one. Obviously, there's many more. Uh, we have something that we're actually working on called the FAN, uh, which is a, a floating Accessibility Navigator, uh, you'll hear more about, you know, in, in smaller groups. Uh, we're really excited about this because it's something we've, we're working on productizing that ultimately addresses a lot of these issues. Um, just going back on advocacy, uh, one of the things that, you know, we're floating around with the lawsuits. We know that the rules are already there. The laws are there. Um, uh, it's not really been enforced uh, to the degree that maybe we had hoped previously. Uh, Target lawsuit is always mentioned, you know, as one big one where, you know, they were not providing, and I think it was the uh, uh, organization for the blind that ultimately sued them, and they won somewhere six million or something like that. I don't know what the final settlement was. But, you know, I, uh, John had actually brought something else. Uh, last year, um, uh, this administration actually had come about with h and Block and really kind of went in on, okay, H&R Block was another company that's now kind of been put forth as one that needs to, you know, step up their game. And they started to go and actually really kind of drilling in on the guidelines that need to, need to happen. So there, there is kind of a, a uh, kind of a spark going on right now that, you know, that with the, um, the rules in place, there's going to be more awareness because there's going to be more enforcement. Uh, and one of the things, you know, as far as City Mouse is concerned that I don't know if John touched on, you know, there are a few agencies out, uh, SS BART being one, uh, there's maybe one other, uh, DQ is another one. Uh, what we found as we kind of went through it is that, you know, they only go for the blue chip, you know, obviously you got to support your business, but the community of, of, of uh, businesses online is way bigger than that. So we're hoping that we actually can, you know, can kind of take the reins of that and actually help some of these businesses, you know, when it comes to that point where, you know, they got to do something, you know, we're hoping to be the guys to help do it. So 
Uh, lastly, uh, we're, we're small but growing. You know, we're here in front of you guys and hoping we can get you guys signed up with this because with the advocacy side and going to Albany and D.C. and kind of pushing this, we feel that we've got something here and we can really help out. So that's really what Responsive Plus is. Uh, I want to thank you. You know, if there's any questions, we can handle some questions. And, uh, yeah. Just stand up. Okay. I'm curious with your uh, with your left side of vision gone. Yes. What what kinds of web pages work best for you? Are you finding anything difficult or or the things do they work all right? All right. I'll tell you one thing that I really hate. John, can you repeat the question? So I'm sorry. Which which web <laughs> works for you? All right. The question was yeah with with my particular uh, disability and uh, in regards to the visual field cut, uh, which works best for me or what, yeah, what, what are the issues the are the worst. There's one thing that I really hate, centered copy. It took me a while to figure out, to, you know, to, to get a good pace on reading. Right, and in the beginning in therapy, I had to draw a, like a, a highlight line down the left side of the page so that whenever I returned to the line, I, you know, I would stop there and go back, I'll stop there and go back. So, well, you center copy, so now you have a funny line. Of, so you'll end up clipping off words on the left side because you don't know where it starts. The only way reason you would know it starts further out is by looking over all the way on the right side to see, oh, this line is further out, so therefore the copy is further out to the left. But horrible. Like, you, it's almost impossible to, to get through it without really, like, reading it twice, essentially. And even then it's really tough, actually. So uh, there are a lot of things like that that you would never sort of think of. Uh, you know, and just, just the special relationship of things on the page, you know, and, and uh, anything that goes outside normal design practices, if you're, if you're hanging copy off weird ways or, or not standardizing on your fonts so that you're, you're switching something out to maybe highlight it, but it doesn't have a visual relationship with other things. So, uh, that's that's one thing that I think of straight off the top of my head. A couple times you mentioned that design best practices mm -hmm. offer a lot of affordances for accessibility, um, and that you know intuitively makes sense to me that the reason they're best practices is because they work. Um, is there anything that you see? Trending as a as a best practice, or even historically a best practice, is actually harmful. Let's see. Off. Well, I guess the centered text was definitely one that, yeah. that off the top of my head uh, was one. As far as uh, as far as new stuff, potentially. Uh, the lack of white space and stuff, and that you're overloading with copy, uh, and uh, it's the line spacing is too tight. Uh, that's where there's even one of the things that's difficult or uh, can be thought through too is that the best practices say for someone that is using an assistive device, you often want more copy uh, to describe to describe stuff. Uh, and uh, that, for someone with a cognitive disability, has the converse effect. So, uh, but that's, that's sort of best practices in design to, like if you're, if you're trying to sort of wedge it all together to kind of satisfy everyone, 
that doesn't really work unless it's done properly to standards because uh, the, with standards a lot of that type of stuff is, is thought through but um, the overwhelming overwhelming amount of information too many visual entry points on a page the, the wanting to get everything in front of someone uh, on that first page uh, one of the difficult things about web design work is things have often been loaded heavily on the home page because the, the powers that be in the decision making process often want everything on the home page because they know that most users don't go past the home page. Like, I think 90% of traffic only hits the home page and doesn't go deeper in, in your site. Uh, so because of that, when people look at traffic patterns as designers and designers reacting to clients that say, hey, we're getting a lot of traffic on the, on the home page but not other pages, that's why we put everything on the home page that conversely has a real difficult, uh, creates difficulties for people with cognitive issues if, by having an overwhelming amount of information up front rather than clarity. So maybe that, that was too off the top of my head. Though. Yeah. Yeah. Could you guys talk about the White House project or how you got to the White House project? Well, it's really, it's not uh, directly related to yes, this, yes. but there is a relation to the fact that, uh, that uh, I have a relationship with uh, the head of neurology at Columbia University. So I kind of look at this you know, almost like we can kind of extend even the, even the testing and ideas to someone who's dealing with this on a regular basis and all kinds of things, from strokes to aneurysms to all kinds. So, so that's really uh, the, the connection. But for me personally, it's, uh, I'm on the board of that organization. And that's really asking for childhood obesity. You know, that's what that's what it talks about. I used hip hop and music, and right. so we were able to get Michelle Obama involved, and you know, it's been pretty exciting. Get to walk in the White House and talk to these guys. Mm -hmm. All politics aside, it's pretty cool to walk in. So that's what it is. Yeah, and actually speaking to that too, um, I do a lot of advocacy work in in D.C. and Albany as well around. Uh, around the Brain Injury Association of New York State. Uh, and um, uh, my company is certified by, as a disability owned business by the United States Business Leadership Network, uh, which is a uh, national organization that certifies disability owned businesses. And uh, they are motivated to get this certification into the vendor streams of all companies and and we're actually talking in Albany around that and also the mayor's office around, around getting that certification integrated into the New York State's uh, vendor streams. Uh, and it's, uh, uh, it's a great people with, great, it's great for people with disabilities that is the most underemployed uh, demographic uh, group in, in the country. Uh, and uh, now to have some uh, support by a lot, a lot of uh, uh, Fortune 500 corporations. Uh, the organization is the USBLN.org. Uh, you can see all their uh, all their sponsors and uh, all these great companies that have uh, really prioritized the employment of people with disabilities within their company and also within uh, their vendor streams to. Uh, bring in uh, small businesses that are disability owned. A question on the uh, the learn more kind of link or the importance of doing like a call out like that. Mm -hmm. I, I know one of the discussion points is being for cognitive is around like removing the underlying of links and sort of that scenario. So curious, was there like a methodology for like the learn more? Uh, without doing the underline versus doing the underline and doing an arrow and yeah. <laughs> um, I think that that um, it's really about your standard of 
of design within your community, I guess. And uh, as far as I think, you know, the W3C and the way that they drill down so hard on everything around that, um, uh, I would I would defer to them on everything around that. I wouldn't sort of touch it uh, in that if the usability of, of links being underlined or not underlined, uh, I do think that uh, keeping links underlined is probably something for the older community as well, knowing that that uh, is the way that was a standard practice. I think it's kind of being pulled away a little bit, but uh, uh, that's something that you can often see by how your how your traffic is moving. Mm -hmm. your, is your question more to how it's displayed? Is that what you're saying? Like how like yeah, I was yeah. wondering if this was a choice um, just for the way to choose to present that. I, I mean, honestly, uh, when, when, when we were putting this together, it really wasn't in, in my head, you know, uh, just speaking as I was putting this slide together, was, you know, to make it as simple as possible to get to the next point, you know, um, starting with the bolder headline. You know, John just mentioned something as he was explaining, like, the center type. I'm like, now I feel bad. <laughs> 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 no. I didn't that to me when I was doing that, but now we'll never center type again. <laughs> right, that's a good point. <laughs> I, def I mean, personally, I think it's interesting. Like, it falls into a more adaptable concept to me. If I would assume different people have different presentations of that. So, like, this, I could obviously say how this would stand out more. Right. Like, a larger hit target. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, the idea is, like, we, want, we obviously want to simplify things, you know? So, you know, even in the presentation, you know, in the aspect of learn more really is at the bottom here. But I mean, the idea is to simplify it. stands out on the whole cognitive disability is the fact that it's so wide open, you know, I mean, it, it just what, even reading the science, it was, I think it was an article, John, it was a MIT kind of article, and, you know, just delving into this, it just seems to me, I mean, I, I love the aspect of, like, you know, creating some new solutions, so, you know, joining with John and, you know, being in this group means, you know, we can be closer, um, but there's not a lot of rules. question. Uh, how can this group be helpful to you in what you're doing with working cognitive disabilities? How can, how can we work with you to make something happen? I think that that opening the dialogue uh, in uh, responsiveplus.org, which will just uh, essentially start and launch now, uh, and uh, uh, we really want to have the design community and the technology community there. And uh, being in New York where uh, we have a major center for, for communications and marketing uh, and understand the psychology of how to put information out there, I think that we should be the leading people around being uh, responsive to all people that are using the internet, including people with disabilities and cognitive disabilities. Yeah. You know, and, and uh, it's it's like a it's a it's a small group as we're here now, but it's a big issue. So for us, it's like okay, this is a challenge, but us standing here and starting out is really where you know. Um, we didn't mention there is an actual uh, sign up, uh, responsiveplus.org. Uh, is that on the? Uh, so where is that actually? Is you share up? that with the organizers, we'll make sure to put it on. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, because you know with that is kind of our starting a group, and uh, you know, we'd like to see the group <laughs> even packed with people. You know, yeah. uh, of all different walks. You know, from someone with uh, you know challenges to you know uh, potential clients who don't really understand it. You know, so uh, kind of an incubator.
this was also our experiment with the, the hangout. So there was about seven people in the meetup today. So I guess if anyone has a question, they want to type it in here. But uh, it sounds like it was a fairly successful trial, and we'll keep doing this for the future. Yeah. Cool. Thanks for piloting so, that. Yeah. Piloting, all right. Yeah. <laughs> and there it is. <laughs> okay, great. All right. Any other questions? Let's give another hand to uh, Uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do gonna some wrapping up announcements. Um, so again, thank you all for coming tonight. Well, I think we can probably hang out for a little bit. Uh, what time do we need to be out of this space? All right, well, you'll you'll know when you need to be out. Um, <laughs> we'll let you know. And uh, and also, I would want to give a heads up that next month we're we're targeting the first Tuesday of every month for the meetup. Um, we don't have specifics on next meetup yet, but you can plan that that'll be the date. Um, and similarly on location, we're still working on that, but you know we'll let you know on the meetup group what the plan is. And uh, is there anything else? I'm looking to my other organizers. No? I think that's it. Thanks again for coming.